say hello again. Well, it's a really cold winter day here near Enumclaw, just uh, about 10 miles away from where I live. And I wanted to get out. It's a sunny, partly sunny day, really frigid, below freezing, really cold for here in the Pacific Northwest. did a podcast recently talking about my tips for painting in the snow, painting in cold weather, so I'm using those tips today. I'm close to home. I've got the car right here if I need to sit in it and warm up. I've got a nice hot thermos of coffee I can drink to warm up. And I'm going to go with a simple composition. I'm going to paint this old dilapidated barn. It's kind of falling down. I've, it's caught my eye a couple times. I've taken these country roads just outside Edomclaw and saw this beautiful old barn. During the summer, these roads are a bit busy, but on a snowy day like today, pretty quiet. So I thought it might be nice just to get out and, and do a quick painting of this old barn. So I'm going to get set up. I'll go with a 9 by 12 panel. Not the smallest panel I use for oil paintings, plain air, but pretty small. And I'm just going to go really quick through the turpentine wash to set the tone for the sky and for the barn and the foreground. Pretty limited palette. I don't think I'll need many colors for this one. And I'll jump right into painting the full colors or at least taking some color notes and get wrapped up. As always, thanks so much for joining me. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. quick run down on my palette. I've got artist turpentine here, a little bit of liquid in here. I'll put the artist turpentine away and get out the gamsol as soon as I have the turpentine wash finished. Ivory black, Rembrandt cold gray, titanium white, cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, transparent oxide brown, burnt sienna, alizarin crimson, cad red, cad yellow, and Windsor lemon. So I don't have the ochre, the gamblin radiant lemon, the sap green, the cobalt blue, or the phthalo blue out. I don't think I'll need any of those for this scene since it's so muted. I can create the greens I'm seeing from a little bit of my blue, a little bit of my brown, and the yellow with white or gray. Got a birch panel here that I gessoed myself. It's got three coats of acrylic gesso and one coat of alkyde, artist grade alkyde, just to give it a nice slick, almost oil primed finish. I've sketched in the one third lines on the panel just to give me a quick guide for composition. What I'm thinking is for the composition, Zoom in on the front of that barn, which is the most interesting part to me. I'll put the base of the barn on the lower one-third line, corner closest to us of the barn, this corner here, close to the vertical one-third line on the left-hand side. So something like this. I'll put the roof line of the barn just above the upper one-third line. So the barn's going to be kind of cut off and it's going to be just a little bit outside the, the one-third lines. Something like that. I think I'll include the front of this house. I'm not sure. I may actually turn that background a little more abstract. I'm really liking the colors and the mountains and cloud patterns that I'm seeing off behind the left side of the barn. So even though I'm not going to include that end of the barn, it's going to get cut off. I may include that 
pattern, that abstract pattern I'm seeing, which is a really grayed out band of yellow where the sun is hitting those distant cascade foothills. And then some tree line, distant, very grayed out, tall pine trees, and then some snow covered pasture. So I may play with that and just maybe act like there's a a little bit of a closer foothill behind the barn on that side and just cut out that that house that house has an interesting shape especially when the the sun hits it i like that a it's creating there but i think i want to cut it out for this quick sketch and just go with something a little more abstract i can always do something later or different in the studio i can scale it up and do something bigger later in the studio as well. I'll start out with this bristle brush and a little bit of transparent ox oxide brown with turpentine and just sketch the composition, capture something there that looks interesting to me. When the sun is out, it's on me, so that'll help keep me warm. Um, right now, it's socked in behind some clouds, so everything's kind of dim, but I still get enough ambient light that I'm, I don't need the little lamp this time. I'll switch to this big old broken in Utrecht bristle brush. It's about an inch wide. It's what I normally use plain air for scrubbing in the turpentine wash. She's a lot of turpentine, a little bit of the colors I have set out to suggest the tones that I'm seeing or perhaps to suggest a tone that I'd like to see coming through in the subsequent layers of paint. I kind of scrub out the charcoal lines as I'm doing the wash. Those one-third lines that I put in earlier. So for the sky, I'm just going to go with a clean ultramarine blue. I'll paint maybe toward the horizon. I'll add a little bit of alizarin crimson or burnt sienna. I'll play with it and see which suggests those clouds I'm seeing out on the horizon. And as I get into that tree line, I'll add a little bit of yellow to suggest the, the distant hills. A little bit of yellow, a little bit of burnt sienna. For the barn, I'll use transparent oxide brown for most of it. I may throw in some burnt sienna where the sun is hitting the wood. Maybe a little bit of yellow where it's a lighter value. And then for the foreground, more lizard and crimson. I've got a cotton rag in my left hand, so I can wipe out the brush if I need to, remove some of the paint. It's so cold today that I don't think the wash is going to dry very fast. If the sun comes out, that'll help. The sun on the panel will certainly help it to dry faster, but. As cold as it is, I don't think it's going to dry fast without some sun. Now before this fully dries, I'm going to get out the squeegee and try to squeegee the roof of the barn to give a nice clean edge.
right, there's the very rough turpentine wash in. That squeegee effect is challenging. It's fun, but very challenging. I think if I had a couple smaller squeegees, it would help. Because the, the big squeegee, it travels all the way across the panel when I'm working on these small panels. So that may be something to look for. A little shorter squeegee can be more targeted. So now I'll start to mix up the colors I'm seeing. Just gonna take down some color notes for what for what intrigues me about the scene. The light's changing pretty quick. I think I'll capture a warm gray for the background foothills and then a little bit of grayed out yellow where the sun is hitting those pines. And then the kind of reddish lavender, purplish lavender that's on the roof of the barn in the sun. And just a slightly darker, cooler version of that on the top plane of the snow. And then where the snow is kicked up and getting more light, it's a little more yellow. But it's not a, a bright white, it's a subdued white. And then I'll try to get the barn colors in the shadow and in more direct sun. There's also some beautiful greens at the base of the barn, especially in front. And as it goes into that open doorway, there's some beautiful grayed out greens. I want to try to capture that pretty warm grayed out green. All right. Well, I sat in the truck for a minute, warmed up, drank a cup of coffee. I was getting pretty chilly. Feel better now. Um, show you the colors I've mixed up here. I've got a couple very high key values for the sky. A blue, which is mainly cerulean blue with a touch of ultramarine and white. And then a little warmer version of that. I've added a little bit of a lizard and crimson to that same mix. And I think a touch of cold gray. Then I've got some cloud colors here this one mainly this darker gray which is just a grayed out version a little darker with some black um, of this so kind of a warm gray for the underside of the clouds in the distance now the clouds are changing so much from when i first started that i'm not going to worry too much about the shape or the color i may go back through some of the photos i took of the different light effects and choose what I think is most striking. But I think what I like best is this kind of warmish gray lavender against the white of the barn roof. The snow on the barn roof. And I've got some grays. Kind of a brown gray. A lighter version of that. A little warmer. And green for the background foothills. And then I have colors mixed for the barn. The darkest dark. This is a cooler brown this is a warmer brown with just a hint of green so this is more blue this is just a touch more red green um, and this warm really vibrant green this is for those kind of moss covered green looking planks of fallen wood at the bottom of the opening of the barn then some warm brown a lizard and crimson for the underside of the eaves where it's in shadow. And this is the deepest shadow inside the barn door there. These are some warm grays for the front of the barn. And for the side of the barn receding into shadow, I'll just mix into these darker and cooler colors. Then I have a, a bluish green, really grayed out, very high value for the base of the barn in the shadow and in the sun and I'll just tip those back and forth a bit. Now I'm in shadow right now so there's not a whole lot of difference between the faces of the barn. So I'm not going to worry too much about trying to model that. I'll, again I'll probably look at the photos I have and choose it how strong I want the, the shadows to be when I finish this in the studio. Then I've got some tones for the snow. A, these are all really the same value and then one slightly higher value these are just different variations on lavender, more blue, more alizarin crimson, more burnt sienna. Just slight 
value shifts. So I'm just going to place those in roughly um, and leave it pretty thin so I can finish it in the studio. And then I'll add just a few highlights with this highlight color showing that where the snow is kind of tilted up toward the sun, it's catching more light. I'll start with a large rosemary evergreen brush. It's a synthetic brush, it's a long flat. I find it covers a lot of canvas really quickly and I can turn it on its edge to get a sharp edge or I can turn it on its flat to cover a lot of canvas. I'll add just a little bit of Gamsol where I need to in order to get the paint to flow. It's kind of sticky since it's cold out. weather kills my battery pretty quick so I sat in the truck for a minute and changed my camera battery. As the sky is climbing higher it gets a little warmer here in person so I've added just a little bit of my brownish warm brownish barn color to the sky mixture just to take that note so I remember it back in the studio. Now the scene is really changing um, everything is cooler now as it's gotten later in the day. The sun hasn't come back out from behind the clouds. So I'm kind of going by memory for the colors and going by what's in front of me for the shapes. Going with a little smaller evergreen. This is a number three for some of the details of the barn.
back scratcher here to help steady my hand. I'll use this under this eave, this far eave. shadow side, the distant side, it's a little cooler. And then for this area and this closer shadow, I'm going to go with this warmer shadow brown. It has just a little more burnt sienna, so it's a little warmer. Now there's an angle change. There's an angle here that's steeper. And then it's more shallow. I tried to get that with the squeegee but I struggled to control it. This door shadow is pretty warm. This next window shadow is a little cooler. In fact right now it looks like there's a hint of cobalt blue in that. I may add that later. out real quick you can see how beautiful the light is now and how different it is now I'm just going to jot down some color notes for the snow and it'll be about good you can see I added that tree at the last minute I really love the shape of that tree so I thought I would jot the shape down real quick with the green barn colors that I mixed. It's pretty similar. with the illusion of depth is 
make objects at near a little warmer and also a little bigger so the divots the dents and the dips in the snow here where I'm throwing in the highlights I want their shapes to be random but just roughly bigger than the little divots and dents in the snow in the distance so if I can make these shapes generally bigger and these shapes generally smaller it'll help with that illusion There's the end result. I'm pretty happy with how it came out. I like the color notes that I captured. I like the video that I took while I was here. I think it might be inspiration for a, a couple paintings. Beautiful old barn. I'll take it back to my studio and clean it up just a bit. Make some decisions about the, the final lighting. But I think the composition works pretty well. I have a bunch of beautiful colors mixed here, quite a bit of paint left, and they're perfect for the scene, so I can just scrape those off this side palette and put them on my day tripper palette and close the lid on them and take them home with me. I'll scrape those off onto another container and put them in the fridge, put them in the freezer, and then I can use those colors when I'm ready to finish this painting in the studio. As always, thanks so much for joining me. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. If you'd like to support the channel, please visit my website. I sell these little plain air pieces at a reasonable price because I consider them practice. It really makes me happy when someone likes my art enough that they want to hang it in their home. You can also sign up for my newsletter and stay up to date on my new work and shows and get a discount on original art and prints.